Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Each week during our Farm Basics time, we try to take a complex issue that we deal with on the farm and simplify that so even if you're a non-farmer, you can understand what we're talking about and why it's such an issue for us on the farm. Well, today's topic is nutrient stratification. And what we mean by that is for all crops, they need plant food, they need nutrients, things like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and it's where those are at in the soil. What happens a lot of times on the farm is we'll get all of our nutrients or a good portion of our nutrients in the top one or two or maybe three inches and then we've got all this soil below that's very nutrient depleted. That's not a good thing and that's called nutrient stratification. I had a non-farmer ask me last summer, man are you guys just not doing a good job that you've got nutrient stratification? They'd read it in some magazine somewhere, oh farmers are just having this problem with nutrient stratification and I said well I don't know what does your lawn look like? And he said, what are you talking about? I said, well have you pulled soil samples out of your lawn and just taken the top couple of inches and the next couple inches down? He's like, well, no, I've never pulled any soil sample in my lawn. I said, go and pull a sample in your lawn and then let me know how you turn out. And he's like, well, what are you getting at? And I said, you've got that nutrient stratification in your lawn too. And he goes, well, why do I have that problem? And I said, you have that problem because all your fertilizer, you've spread across the top of the ground and then tried to water it in. And there are nutrients like phosphorus, for example, that really doesn't move much in soil. So if you spread it on the top and you water in your lawn fertilizer like it tells you to do on the bag, well, it might move it in just a tiny little bit, maybe in the top quarter inch of soil, but it's not gonna move a whole lot further than that unless you got really sandy soil in your lawn. My point is this, is it's not like we're necessarily doing something wrong but it is definitely something to be aware of with different nutrients how they move in the soil and for farmers that are reducing tillage on their farms I applaud them there's so many good things about reducing tillage the first one being reducing erosion which is great and farmers over the last several decades have definitely reduced erosion tremendously in our country it's been a great thing now the challenge with that is all right if I don't do any tillage how do I get those nutrients deep and then you have to really incorporate the full system with using cover crops with planting different crops based Basically, in between your corn that you raised this year, you'd put something else out there like a cereal rye or a turnip or a radish or something like that to grow for the couple of months that are left in the growing season. Then next spring you'd plant whatever you want, soybeans, corn, wheat, whatever the case may be. And those cover crops can help push nutrients down with their root systems. Well, not necessarily. And this is the whole thing. A lot of people say, well, let's do things just like nature does. Well, here's how nature did it on the prairie. Okay, it didn't fertilize other than the buffalo roaming. And where did they incorporate their fertilizer? They didn't incorporate it. They laid it on top of the ground. Okay, and how about all that grass when it dies off every year? There's a lot of top growth that dies off. Where do all those nutrients go? They also sit on top of the ground. So nature has nutrient stratification. That's the way it is. Here's the problem. That's not real great for raising crops. It's not the best for raising grass. It's not the best for raising corn, for soybeans, for wheat, for any crop. What we want is more of the nutrients down a little deeper. How farmers first started doing that was through tillage. That's not necessarily the best way because like Darren mentioned, there is erosion there. So now what a lot of farmers are doing is placing the fertilizer deeper with their planters or with machines like a strip till machine or a coulter machine, something like that. On our farm, we're trying to get a lot of fertilizer down at eight to 10 inches deep, just pulling a shank through the soil, that works out very well. The more fertilizer we can get down deeper in the soil, the more roots we have deeper in the soil, and also the more stable those nutrients are, the less water concern we have. So basically when Brian is talking about this coulter or this shank to put nutrients down deep in the soil, like for our farm we'll use a shank, which is basically a knife that'll slice down through the soil, and it'll have a tube that comes in right behind the knife that'll drop the plant food down right at the bottom or, or wherever you want it to go. So you can get those nutrients down deeper in the soil, and the reason that that's better than the system that nature started with where all the nutrients were on the top is now those nutrients are safe. If there is any erosion, they aren't gonna wash away. And for roots, later on in the summer when it gets hot and dry, they're trying to go down deep looking for water. Now they find water and food. That's the ideal situation for plants. Well, once again, this nutrient stratification is a big thing for farmers. It's something we are constantly fighting on the farm. 
because nature is naturally going to place a lot of nutrients when crops are done, when grass is done, when anything is done, they're going to be laying on the soil surface. We've got to get those down into the ground a little bit more in order to get maximum yield production the following years. Well, nutrient stratification is definitely an issue that farmers are aware of and trying to manage on their farms. Another one of those situations farmers are after on their farms is weed control. Can you identify this week's weed of the week? 